Hey, Bob here with JD Squared. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, um, I'm going to show you in this video today a feature that we're working on on the XR6 rotary cutter. Now, it's actually not only the XR6, it's also can work on our flatbed tables, our upcoming extreme table. Um, you'll see a little bit about that in a month or so. Um, also, it'll work on the XR12, which I should be shooting a video tomorrow showing you the XR12, where we're at. We've got the gantry on it. They're actually machining the gantry right now. All the carriages are done. Most of the parts are done. So I'm really, really excited about the XR12 because it's this machine on steroids. It's really cool. But anyway, what we're doing now, since I pretty much think I'm done with production, I think we've got it pretty well worked out to where we're roughly lead time around four weeks is what we're shooting for. Um, we're trying to do it quicker than that, but right now four weeks doesn't look bad. We've been able to obtain um, plenty of motors, amplifiers. We've got our chip shortage problem all sorted out. I think we're good for 540 machines. The new computers are just running flawlessly in the new machines. Um, because if you didn't know, we had to redesign our computers at all because we couldn't get chips. That, the whole chip shortage deal is, is real. So anyway, um, thank God we built our own computers because if we didn't, we wouldn't be able to sell you tables right now. If we were relying on somebody else, that would be a problem. But since we do build our own computers, we were able to redesign them and we decided to go to the next step with a new control system. I'll talk a little bit about, more about that in other videos. But anyway, some of the videos to give you an idea that I'm going to shoot is today I want to talk about a project that's actually still in the works because a lot of people have been asking about it and it's the drilling capability of our new line of machines, the rotaries and the flats. So you can see the, the drill right here. So this video today, I'll be talking about the development, where we're at in the development stage of drilling. Tomorrow, I think I'm gonna shoot a video uh, where we're gonna go ahead and cut a 10 foot section of eight inch pipe, half inch wall, to just give you an idea of the responsiveness, the speed and the power of the XR6. Um, Day after that, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I think I just do some regular cutting, wedge cutting, things like that. If you've got any ideas, um, just go ahead and pop a comment in. I'll be checking the comments and everything like that and see what you want um, or what you like to see, and I'll try to get to that quickly. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit about the drill attachment. Probably the first question you got is when do you think you're going to be done developing the drill option? And if I had to guess, I would say somewhere between four to six weeks, and I'll give you an idea how I come up with that number here in a minute, but don't hold me to it. It could be longer, like there are external factors that we have to deal with, but I would guess four to six weeks. Let's put it this way. I'd bet you a hundred bucks we're done within four to six weeks, but I wouldn't bet you 10,000 bucks. It could be two months, could be three months, I don't know. Um, but we are going as fast as possible, and right now everything is looking really, really good. So I feel kind of good about the four to six week timeline. But anyway, that's my best guess of when we're gonna be done. So why did I say four to six weeks? Well, there's two things that we still have to do. Let me first tell you what we've already done. The software in Mint, which stands for machine interface in our control panel, has already been completed. So it knows how to drill, how to peck drill, stuff like that. The software in our controller knows how to drill. All of that is completed. Clearly all the hardware in the machine is done where we have the ability to raise the torch out of the way while we're drilling. All of that is completed. So we feel pretty good about that. The two things that we still have to do, and, and as far as I know, the only two things, is we have to modify Camelot, and that's the software that we provide with the machine. We write in-house, it's our software, to recognize a hole as being drilled and not plasma cut or milled. So we have to do that also. That could take a week or so, a little bit longer, I'm not sure. And the other thing we have to do, and this is where the majority of the time is gonna come in, is we have to create a control board to control the drill itself. Now that board has to have three features, forward and reverse, obviously, variable speed control, and also the ability to soft start the drill. Um, they're brushes, so we don't want to really hit it with a on-off sudden surge of power because that drastically will shorten the life of the brushes. So we have to do that. Now, to get a PCB, printed circuit board, uh, two to three weeks in that area, I think it's like two weeks normally, but two to three weeks, um, and then once that board shows up, 
we program our automated assembly line and everything, and then we make the rest of the board. So that's how I came up with my guess of four to six weeks. So what are you going to get for your hard-earned money if you decide you want to purchase the drill option? You're going to get the drill head. Now the drill heads that we you are, have chosen are made by Milwaukee and it's a mag drill head. You know the magnetic drills? It's the replacement drill head off of those. This particular one has a half inch chuck in it. It's rated for 200 pounds of downforce. And we're hoping to be able to do you know, half inch holes, stuff like that. And I think I mentioned this is not a 15,000 pound CNC mill. So you're not gonna be able to deep hole drill. We're estimating drilling probably in the half inch to um, in the half inch range, call it 12, 13 millimeters deep. So we call it shallow hole drilling. And it's really designed to drill holes, tube, pipe, uh, you know, channel, things like that that have sections and they're not solid shapes. So you get that. You also get a new floating head torch assembly with a pneumatic control system on it, complete with regulator which will regulate the speed of how fast it'll go up and down so we don't jar it loose. And that will raise the torch out of the way when you drill it. So clearly you're gonna to to drill your holes first, then the torch will be in the up position, and then after you drill it, the torch will lower and you'll be able to cut your parts out. And you're gonna see that when I drill a little bit later in this video when you actually see the machine operating. So you get a whole new floating control system. You also get the, the um, solenoid valves, the air, the regulators, and all this stuff to control that floating head assembly. You also clearly get all the mounts and everything to mount the drill, and of course all the wiring and the control boards to control the drill, and the software upgrades, obviously you get all that for free anyway, in order to do it. So you can see there's quite a few components in order to do that. Now. When we buy a drill head right here, we do have to modify the cable on the other end for a quick disconnect so that you can get this thing in and out of the machine pretty quickly. So all of that is taken care of. So you can tell there's, there's quite, a, a, quite a few components that you will get with your kit. Now, all of these components can be installed at any day. You could order this, this drill head option a year from now or a year after you own your machine put it in the machine. This is just the first option of many that we are bringing out for our extreme series of machines. And I'm talking flatbeds, rotaries, everything. This just happens to be the first option. So that's what you're gonna get. This is what we're gonna make right here. We're gonna drill eight holes in it. We're gonna plasma cut the large hole and then we'll cut off the part. It's about three inches long and it is three inches square tubing with an eighth inch wall. So 75 millimeter square tubing with a three millimeter wall. We're gonna be drilling it with a 8.5 millimeter drill, which I believe is 0.33 inches, little over 5 sixteenths of an inch. And I think I already mentioned this is an eighth inch thick. That's where we drill it. Now the drill is a used drill. So we'll see how good the holes come out. It's not as, um, it don't feel that bad. I think we're okay. Anyway. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna, I'm gonna videotape this in its entirety. So it's gonna do both sides so you can kinda of get an idea of what's going on. So let me go ahead and reposition the camera so you get a little bit better view of it and we'll do this. Now for this section of the video, I'm gonna be behind the camera and I'm gonna be moving around trying to give you an idea. Now whenever you load up square tubing into the XR machine, you're gonna to need to square the tube and locate the center of it. So let me come over here. If you look through here, you can see where I've got it. Let me move in a little bit more. You can see where I'm crooked on purpose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to Mint and I am going to go to the wizard right here and I am going to probe for the square right there. So here in this dialog box, I put in my three by three, my dimensions. I hit generate. Let's go back to plasma. Now I could come over here and I hit run. So she is squaring the tubing right now. You'll see it moving. Now you only need to do this the first time that you load your square tubing. You don't need to do this for every cut. All right, there we go. 
Okay, we have squared it. Let's come back over here. I am going to hit the page up to raise the torch up out of the way. You can see it right there. All righty, let me go ahead and load up the program so that we can cut it. Okay, a couple of points real quick before I hit the run button. Um, I do not have the drill routine optimized. We're feeding down at two inches a minute, but I am starting a little high and I'm going a little low. Also, I am not putting coolant onto the drill. We are contemplating doing that as an option because this green liquid you see right here does not have any lubricity properties. Um, but I don't really want to spray WD-40 on it until I contact the manufacturer and see can we add oil to their stuff without turning this stuff toxic. So anyway, let me walk back over to the control and I will hit the go button and then the drill is relatively loud so you're probably maybe not be able to hear me but I will try to tell you anything that I think that you might need to know. Okay, I just hit the run button. First thing it's gonna do is it's gonna go down and it's probing the top of the tube. All right, now you saw the, the torch pop up. Here comes the drill. Now, one of the reasons we say it's shallow hole is because you can see the torch up under there. The drill is below the torch about an inch. Um, so that's why we call this a shallow hole drill. All right, we just drilled our fourth hole on side one. We'll go ahead and we'll get the others. Notice how fast and clean the XR6 moves. We're moving about a thousand inches a minute. We can go slower or faster. Right now we've got it limited at a thousand. That's the rapid speed. The drill speed down, by the way, is two inches a minute. Okay, that's our final hole. The drill's off. You'll see the torch drop. I'll back up, see it go on down. All right, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut our part off. Let's get over here where you can see that. And we are done. Let me go ahead and pull the part out. I'll show you what it looks like and give you some closing comments. Okay, we've got our part. We're all finished. This is it right here. Um, really nice looking holes actually, considering I'm not putting any oil on the drill bit. Um, but that's your finished part right there. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. And um, please subscribe because as I think I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna try to do a video a day for the next couple of weeks here, maybe even longer than that. I got a lot of videos to make on the XR6 to show you some of the stuff, but I just wanted to give you a heads up on what we're doing. I really appreciate you taking your time out and watching the video. Hope you have a great day. Take care, bye.